welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about EM assay or it's also known as electrophoretic mobility shift assay this is better known as gel shift assay okay or electrophoresis gel shift assay this is a technique to detect uh, whether protein is attached with DNA or RNA or not okay you know uh, there are many times inside the cellular processes where a protein needs to interact with DNA or RNA for example during the transcription translation and all those fundamental processes protein needs to interact with the DNA right and that can be detected with this EMSA assay now how this process works this EMSA is nothing but a standard procedure of gel electrophoresis okay standardly normal gel electrophoresis process will be done and after the normal gel electrophoresis is achieved then what we have let's say let's let's draw the gel here these are the wells and let's say after uh, we run the gel we get different bands in different regions okay let's say this is the we get one band here for example Okay, these are the samples, say sample 1, sample 2. So, this is a normal agarose gel electrophoresis with the DNA sample. Okay. And now what we know is that DNA molecules can be separated using this uh, gel, uh, agarose gel, based on their size, okay, or length, right. So, small length DNA will migrate further in the gel, while the larger fragment will migrate less in the gel. That's the normal idea. Now, to see whether the DNA or RNA is attached with protein or not, it also relies on the same idea of gel separation technique. That is, when the DNA or RNA, let's say the example in this case we talk about DNA, when the DNA is attached with a protein, in that case, that DNA will migrate slowly. They have a slow migration rate, okay? So, because as the protein molecules are bigger and agarose gel is not very good to separate protein molecules, that's why you would use SDS page to separate protein molecules. But in this case, as proteins attached with the DNA, that, that prevents the DNA to migrate. So, as a result, let's say normally, if there is only DNA, same DNA we are talking about, same fragment of DNA, uh, that DNA, let's say DNA X, same DNA here. The DNA X fragment migrates and go to this particular part, let's say this one, further. Now once it is attached with a protein, same DNA fragment, same length of the DNA, but once it is attached to a protein, the migration will be less. So we get a band here. So this is when attached with proteins, when no proteins are there. So if we take two snapshots. Just imagine if we take two snapshots or two conditions when we run this process first only with the DNA and then we run it with unknown situations we can find out whether it is a naked DNA running or a protein attached DNA run, running right. So let's say in some cases uh, uh, cellular fractionations are required in different fragments to understand whether the DNA is interacting with any proteins or not. For example, we want to understand the study of how transcription begins in eukaryotes. So in that case, we know multiple proteins come in and they, they sit in different regions of the DNA, they interact with themselves to finally activate the transcription process. So to how would you understand all these things? We use this type of assays, the electrophoretic mobility shift assay, the shifting of mobility, right? While only DNA mobility is higher, when proteins attached with the same DNA, mobility gets lower, shift in the mobility, that is electrophoretic mobility shift assay. We also call it gel shift assay or electrophoretic gel shift assay, same type of meaning. Now you know, in that case, let's say you take a cellular fractionations in different timestamps to find out when DNA is interacting with proteins, okay, or when RNA is interacting with proteins, if you need to study how translation works, in those conditions, you will have different, uh, different, let's say, different vials with all those fractionations, right? Now, let's say at the very beginning, if you run the same step at the very beginning, what you are getting, you are getting bands like that uh, normally. Now, after that, the same DNA fragment you take, 
you run it you will see a band at the at this bottom at this place okay now after some time you take the same dna fragment run the band you will find that band coming somewhere here that means the dna is now attached with some sort of protein that's why there is a change in the dna mobility in the electrophoretic gel okay similarly if you take this third one let's say you will get uh, the band at this position that means some more proteins now involved with the dna now at this fourth you find the dna again in this that means all the proteins are dissociated so by by taking different fractionations of different time stamp you can find when proteins are involving in interaction with the dna or rna during the different reaction stages of transcription or translation that is enormously helpful to understand what is going on and how exactly dna or rna is prepared to interact with the proteins and how they actually interact with proteins and how this whole process actually works it also very helpful to understand that process of how this fundamental processes work inside our body inside our cell so that is why it is very important very easy technique as you know nothing to be done much you just take out the samples take the fractionate fractionate and you load them in the agarose gel electrophoretic gel any type and then you run the gel to find out the scenario based on only one thing the proteins when involved with the dna make the dna go slow okay that is the idea rest of the thing is very simple so that in a sense is electrophoretic mobility shift assay or emsa or electrophoretic gel shift assay so if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more and more useful videos like that thank you